All right, everybody, welcome back. Sports Bash Live 97.3 ESPN. Earlier today, we told you uh, the Flyers had a little press conference. Chuck Fletcher was speaking. Got a little chance to see what their offseason now that the Stanley Cup is in the past. The Tampa Bay Lightning, back-to-back champions, five games. They beat the Montreal Canadiens. So how can the Flyers get to that level? Well, it all starts now. And Kevin Durso is here, our Flyers insider from 97.3 ESPN. Dot com, who has some insight on what Chuck Fletcher had to say today. And, Kevin, what this offseason might look like. Let me start with Fletcher today and some of the takeaways um, that you got. Uh, a lot of this obviously has to do with the draft also coming up. So what was maybe the key comment or point that Chuck Fletcher made today that stood out that makes you kind of raise your eyebrows? Well, he definitely noted that last year was unacceptable and seemed to make it clear that – you know, that not one person's going to fix this by himself. So you can't just look for one guy in, in a trade, one guy that you think you get rid of in expansion that opens up cap space for one player. It's not going to fix the whole problem here. So that is a, a fair recognition for where this team is because you're far enough away from where the Tampa Bay Lightning are and even where the Montreal Canadiens are, especially, you know, the Montreal Canadiens were a weird situation this year because they finished with one win fewer than the Flyers did technically, but made the playoffs had more points, and then make a run. It, th- that doesn't necessarily equate to being a true contender. The, the, I think that Montreal is certainly a playoff team going forward because they'll continue to grow with their development. And maybe the Flyers aren't really there at this moment when you think about all the things they need to do. They need better help defensively. And Fletcher definitely noted that everybody's got to be better on the defensive end, that they, they need to improve the goals against. And I think the big takeaway was something that he that he said that was he kind of emphasized by repeating himself – you have no chance, and then said, he said again, no chance to win in this league if you're not in the top half of the league defensively. And that really is where it comes down to. This is a philosophical thing at this point for this team, is that when you're allowing goals at the clip that they were a year ago, right. it, it is a complete team-wide issue, and everybody needs to improve. And it sounds to me like, based on what he was saying, while not giving away certainly a lot of information, that... It's been talked about within the organization that the focus needs to be that everybody comes ready to be better in that area. Yeah, uh, you know, obviously this is a team that, I mean, it it fell way below expectations though, right? I mean, this team went seven games against the Islanders in the second round. They were the number one seed. And the one guy they lost was Matt Niskanen. I mean, it sounds as if without saying it, they really look at that loss as one of the biggest problems that this team had. And that's... I don't know. I mean, does that sound like such an unfixable thing? Hey, we got to replace Matt Nixon. And last year, unfixable, maybe because of how how it caught him off guard. But they got a full year now to say, "Hey, how do we replace Matt Nixon?" Is that the one thing and the most important thing they need to figure out how to do? Well, I think that what they need to do most importantly, kind of in the same vein of replacing Matt Niskin, is find somebody who plays well alongside of Ivan Provorov. That's that's really what I think was missing is not necessarily that Matt Niskin was the end all be all of players who makes you better defensively, but he balanced out Ivan Provorov's game so well that you just could trust that top pairing to do whatever they needed to. And they were re- worked so well together and it just had this trickle down effect to the two lower pairings whoever was playing that everybody seemed to be better and then the forwards kind of bought in as well I I know that he made mention of today specifically of not only the players who were like defensively trying to add players but again not only just one player not make the team but also that it is a philosophical thing and he talked about the pandemic being in effect and guys who you know, whether it's lack of practice time, not having the normal offseason training, whatever it is, there's really no excuses now. Like if you if you sat there, we didn't like the excuse of the pandemic anyway and all the covid restrictions and things like that. we didn't like that excuse at the end of the year anyway. But you really don't have anything to fall back on now. You have a normal offseason. Rinks are open. Guys should be able to be training the plan of, that the front office would like these players to follow in the offseason has been laid out for them. So. They have all the guidelines they need at this point, and it's really now just about buying into the whole process here and doing everything you can to cut down on the goals against. Be the defensive team you were two seasons ago because you were a really good defensive team, and that wasn't just Matt Niskanen. That was other guys buying into the defensive side. So you need to have all of that in place, and I think that that's really the thing. It's not just a matter of replacing one player who seemingly from one year made your team look that much better. I think completely 
they strayed away from what the philosophy was in being a better defensive team that made them look so good and had expectations where they were. And he, he Fletcher also noted about the possibility that expectations got into the heads of some of the younger players too, that there's pressure now involved with making a run, getting one game short of being part of the NHL's Final Four, and then having to follow it up. It's not an excuse. These are professional athletes. They need to be able to come out and deliver based on everything that goes on around the game. But yes, it was a strange year and you can't over, you can't read too much into it, but at the same time, you've got to go out and make improvements because what, as he said, what happened last year was unacceptable. Right. Well, there's a lot here that, um, you know, we can kind of break down. They got uh, the expansion draft coming up. uh, So they're going to lose a guy Uh, who is the most likely guy or guys uh, that the Seattle Kraken, and how might the Flyers approach this expansion draft? Because obviously, you know, hey, do you just let them take whoever they want? You work out a side deal. Um, you know, how do you feel? Um, which guy or guys seem like the most likely to be taken? And what's the approach here for Philadelphia? Yeah, there's a couple. Uh, I, I'd say Shane Gosses Bear is probably right at the top of that list. There's interest in trying to – I've heard there's interest in trying to unload a big contract. Now, Chuck Fletcher did say today it's not easy to do with the bigger contracts. There's a lot of work involved, and it's even harder in a flat cap world. But certainly names like Jake Voracek and James Van like have come up. It's been talked about behind the scenes, I'm sure. They're, they're looking for ways to give themselves as much cap flexibility as possible. So that's where a lot of – especially a lot of rumors involving Jake Voracek come from. I wouldn't be overly shocked if Seattle didn't help the Flyers in any way, shape, or form in that area with the guys like Nick Obey Kubel or Robert Haig as well, because they will probably be unprotected. Uh, you know, Fletcher basically said that their protection list is pretty much finalized. And barring something crazy in the next week, when, or less than a week actually, when the list has to be out before the draft happens next Wednesday, that, that really they've got it figured out. And I, I, I think that it's. Most of it's easy to deduct. I, I mean, obviously, the goaltender you're protecting is Carter Hart. Obviously, the, the defenseman you're probably protecting are Ivan Provorov, Travis Sanheim, and Phil Myers. And then from there, the forwards, most of them are easy to identify as well because you're going to look at protecting guys. You know, Claude Drew and Kevin Hayes have no move clauses. You're going to protect Sean Couturier. You're going to protect Oscar Lindblom. You're probably protecting Travis Konechny. You're down to only about two, you know, two names left at that point that need to go on the list. Scott Lawton has already been confirmed as a guy who's going to be protected when he signed an extension. So you're really down to like one or two names that have to go on there. And to an extent, it's easier to leave those bigger contracts exposed and probably get by in an expansion draft. I don't know that they're going to be overly disappointed if they lose a big contract because it means the entire salary goes. But Fletcher did say that he is open to all possibilities and and possibilities in terms of whether Seattle just takes a player from the unprotected list or whether they do work out a side deal. So both options are certainly on the table. Uh, Kevin Durso, our Flyers insider at Kevin underscore Durso. Uh, Flyers, obviously the offseason, a big one. The best way to improve this team or the most, you know, logical way for this team with their situation would be either via trade free agency how what's the best uh, way they can improve this team based on where they are cap wise what they have on their current roster it's it's not an easy answer to give right now because of the restricted free agents that they have because you have to use some of your current caps they have a little bit of current cap space at the moment but money's going to go in new deals to Travis Sanheim and Carter Hart. And Chuck Fletcher basically said that's not a front burner issue right now. They have time to work that out. Those guys will be qualified offers and they'll be back, no question. It's just a matter of for how much. And, you know, I, I know that that was a hot topic Go after the previous season, after all the successes that they had in the playoffs, making it through almost through the second round into the NHL's Final Four, what kind of contract would Carter Hart get if he followed up the, that season with another one that was just as spectacular what kind of money could they be looking at and what kind of cap hit it's kind of a different animal now because carter hart struggled and didn't have the best year and now you kind of have to navigate that with the flat cap and what you can do to make sure that you have money to address the other areas of need i think trading is probably more of an area that could be a better way to go just because as chuck fletcher said you might with the flat cap see more just natural hockey trades not these you know not these different cap trades or things that you see where there's a lot of gymnastics going on with this stuff. You might just see straight up money for money, one for ones, things like that, where guys are, are making deals that strictly are meant to improve your team or to try to switch out some contracts and maybe navigate the money of it in the long term. 
that might be the way to go. I think the interesting thing and the telling thing that Fletcher did say today about that is, is that basically once you get past the first day or two of free agency, and this includes trades in the offseason as well, most of the activity is kind of over with at that point. Like you've made your decisions for the offseason and now the focus goes to preparing. So it's what it's kind of what makes August a little bit of a boring month in the hockey world because there's not a lot of activity that happens beyond that. You get through free agency and you get through the draft and you have deals that are sometimes made at the draft or deals that are made in that week leading up to free agency. And it's pretty much over at that point. Like, you know, that you have to get to work right now. And these next two to three weeks are exactly when it's got to happen. Right. Because the the flyers were quiet at the trade deadline. And obviously uh, it seems that because uh, of that, you would gear up for making your improvements during the summer. And uh, they're going to need, obviously, um, I guess they're going to need a backup goaltender. I don't know what's going to happen with Brian Elliott there. They need defensive help, as we mentioned. Uh, Seth Jones is a name that keeps coming up. Uh, get your comments on that. Uh, Johnny Goudreau's name. Be, people in this area, Flyers fans, always like the big names. So Seth Jones, Johnny Goudreau. But as you just mentioned, these next two weeks, you might see the most aggressive Chuck Fletcher. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that was really telling about his possible aggressiveness was when he was asked about the Flyers first round pick, the 13th overall pick of the upcoming draft, because we know that the philosophy of this team for many years and Fletcher admitted that it's probably been like this since about 2014, which ironically was when Ron Hextall came in and started as the GM of this team or was part of this team at that point. And, you know, you don't just completely shift focus from developing players and drafting. And certainly I think that there's an an eye on what the Tampa Bay Lightning have done over the last two years, because the majority of their team was draft picks that they've developed really well. And maybe you start to bring into question your development process that you're drafting guys, but they're not getting to the next level. And, you know, for a lot of, you know, a lot of fans out there look at guys. And I, I, I mentioned this, I believe, with Phil Myers specifically that he's an undrafted free agent. So it's a little unrealistic sometimes to just shoot him from, from undrafted free agent who didn't get taken by any team over the course of his draft years to top pairing defensemen as, as potential. It, that, that takes a lot of development. So maybe curbing your expectations on some of these guys can make a difference. So his, him saying that he's not opposed to trading the 13th pick because you sometimes have to use pieces like that to make the significant improvements that, really go the distance and make an impact and get people invested in your team. That might be the way to go. I don't know if people are really going to sit there and be heartbroken if they don't use that pick and use it to get something that they desperately need. Right. Instead of hearing about a guy that, oh, he's three, four years away from being a real impact player. I don't think people need that anymore. I think what they need is and and that's not to say that they don't want to hear about certain picks that have already been made. You know, Cam York's going to be a very popular name as the season begins and both uh, Fletcher and Brent Flair, the assistant GM, have talked about how he now knows after his second year of college and after making his NHL debut at the end of the season, he knows what it takes now to prepare in an off season. Those are the guys that you have to start to try to get excited for. Maybe you don't want to pass them by too quickly, and that's why you consider pieces that you include in trades. But certainly when it came to the pick, he looked almost antsy when that question was asked, as if I, I know in the back of my mind it's out there. I've already thrown it on the table, and – it certainly seems to me like right. that pick is there for the taking. Kevin Durso is with us, our Flyers insider. Uh, right real quick on the expansion draft, can they, mm-hmm. Voracek, can they say, hey, we'll give you a pick if you take him, please? They can try to. I don't know if, if just a pick will do it. Maybe, but. maybe because Hackstall be in there. Yeah, I, I mean, that could it could weigh into things. It might not at all. I, I don't know if. I, I don't really know yet what Dave Haxtell's influence is going to be on the way that they build the team per se. And, you know, so we'll see how that goes. I, I certainly think that they would like to do that. Like that, that, that comes back to, that keeps coming back to the thing that I keep hearing. They'd like to move a big contract and it's yes. certainly the easiest way to do it at this point would be to find a way for Seattle because Seattle's got to make a cap somehow, you know, and they don't have to go near the salary cap limit, but they do have to reach the cap floor. And that's one way to do it. You can make those savvy little pickups that you do with all these other players that you can get, you know, right. and that kind of goes to my point of like a Nick Albee, Kubel, or Robert Haig. Other guy, other teams have guys like that too that don't make a lot of money, could be a valuable player, but you're going to have to get there somehow. So you're going to need names and you're going to need people who are recognized. And, you know, for as much as, uh, for as polarizing a figure as Jake Voracek is with this team, 
He does have an all-star game to his credit. He is a name that would be known around the league. So as Seattle could be looking at that and going, that's a place to begin. That's a place to build the franchise around. Yeah. I know he's probably not the first name that comes to mind when you think building a franchise around a guy, but he, you know, that could be the way they are thinking. And if that's the case and you add a little bit of a sweetener, whether it's a, a prospect that you may not see it having a future in Philly or a pick or something to make it a little bit better. And certainly, again, I think that that's where that 13th comes in handy maybe is that, you know, if you can unload the big contract and say, by the way, we'll give you the first round pick too. Yeah. They, they'd probably be interested. I mean, they've already got the second overall pick in the draft. And I'm sure like like Vegas did their first year, adding multiple first round picks is not off the table for them either to build a future behind the guys they pick up now. All right, so much uh, intrigue with this offseason because uh, this is a team that was the one seed, seventh game, Islanders, Round two, two years ago, terrible season this year, just downright uh, disappointing. I like John Klingberg, by the way. Any chance of uh, prying him away from Dallas? That's an interesting. I do like him too. Um, I will say that I do like him. I don't know what their interest year left would be on in. that deal. Yeah, he signed like yeah. a seven-year deal a little while back. I think that's almost done. Yeah, and well, and here's the other thing for Dallas too: is Dallas has a the guy who actually was picked right behind Nolan Patrick, third overall, Miro Heiskanen, who's due for right, a new right. contract. He's due for a new contract this off season, and it's good good chance it's not going to be small. So because they they definitely value him as well. So I, I'm sure that things like that. It sounds like they're talking about any possibility that's out there. If there is a possibility, I, I do think that the expansion, like another week from now, things are going to pick up big time beyond you know the news of the buyouts from minnesota today and the um you know some of the other stuff that's going on maybe a, a few minor trades the duncan keith trade happened uh yesterday but beyond that i don't think a lot's going to happen until the expansion drafts over and fletcher said kind of seems like there's a majority of teams in the league waiting to get to that point and then moves are going to follow in, in rapid succession because it's basically a two-week sprint at that point for the off-season picture that has the most activity and it's going to be busy uh, well, this has been a busy conversation. lot jam-packed in there. Kevin Durso, at Kevin underscore Durso. Follow him there. All the Flyers off-season action is about to heat up. And when news happens, you can check out Kevin on Twitter over at 97.3ESPN.com and, of course, right here on the Sports Bash. All right, Durso, good to see you, man. Good to see you, Mike. Take care. All right, there's Kevin Durso here on the Sports Bash as we get a little insight on the Flyers. A lot packed into that conversation. But when we come back, we shift gears over to the NFL. ESPN put out its running back list today. Top 10 running backs. Where did Miles Sanders land? Was he even on the list? Find out. You might be surprised. Coming up next.